Forging links. Forging links. Forging links. One person at a time. Guys, just want to share a little something with you that Paul came across. Um, this digital currency thing is coming whether people like it or not. And I think once you watch this video, you'll see the need to actually get into a decentralized finance project. I'll just leave this with you here. So the UK is currently the head of the G7 group. That's the world's most economically advanced countries. And the UK currently chairs the G7 group. Our chancellor, who does our economy, called Chancellor of the Exchequer, his name's Rishi Sunak. He put out this video saying that um, what they want to do is bring in this uh, thing called the central banking digital currency. They want to replace fiat paper money with digital money as a competitor to Bitcoin and crypto money, right? But instead of being uh, decentralized currency, it will be controlled by a government. It's digital currency, but controlled centrally through the banks, Bank of England. So instead of having a bank account with whatever, HSBC or Bank of America, you'll have a bank account directly within the American context with the Fed. In the UK, directly with the Bank of England. You have a personal bank account and you're given digital money in that bank account. These are called central banking digital currencies. The Chancellor of the Exchequer in the UK has already announced their intention to do this as the G7 group. And these, uh, if you look up... Um, this sounds terrifying. If you look way. up uh, the Telegraph newspaper, uh, central bank digital courtesy uh, currency, that, is yeah. that the one down it's, below? Uh, digital currency should be programmable. See that one there? Yeah. Now what yeah. they're doing is they're saying, you know, everyone knows that with inflation at over five percent, it's now five point four percent, right? Uh, our fiat money, the paper money, is increasingly becoming worthless, and we're headed towards a big disaster. They, the Fed wants to raise interest rates, but we're in so much debt that if you raise interest rates people are going to suffer because everyone that the you know we're living on debt as western economies so they realize that this kind of the lifespan of paper money is fast coming to an end because of the 2008 economic crash in particular so they're bringing in these central banking digital currencies why is that word programmable in there so what they said in that article and the and the chance to put a video out saying this as well they've said that this money that you will earn from work instead of having paper money you have this digital money it's programmable so that you can't buy certain foods or if you do something that your employer doesn't like it's all in that article you won't be able to spend your money in other words it's not money they're vouchers they're like food vouchers and they can be programmed so that like the chinese social credit system that if you try and use them on a certain thing it won't work you say you want to buy a burger and they want you to buy bugs which is one of the examples used. If you start to try and buy unhealthy meat, it just won't work. You tap, you tap your card, you can't buy the thing because you've met your quota that month of burgers. You have to buy something like a, a vegan meal. So yeah? it won't just be money in the sense of the way we have dollars or pounds today. Yeah. It'll be something that's controlled in terms of your ability to distribute it. Which is why I'm calling it a voucher. It's a coupon. But even a coupon, if you have a coupon to buy bread, yeah. you can still buy the bread. Yeah. Like. There's but no you can't buy see that coupon to buy bread what you can't do is buy a burger with that coupon it's for bread right yeah right do you feel like you're sounding the alarm yes for people that don't understand what is going on so here i'll put it up for you here yeah so there's the video the group of the world's seven most advanced economies the g7 is launching a set of public policy principles for retail central bank digital currencies cbdc's Central bank digital currencies could be a digital version of money, a bit like a digital banknote that could be used alongside... Right, so that's the guy who runs our economy in the UK. His name's the Chancellor of the Exchequer. And here is the article. Bank of England tells ministers to intervene on digital currency programming. Yeah, And here's a quote from the article. Digital cash could be programmed to ensure it is only spent on essentials or goods which an employer or government deems to be sensible. Holy shit. I'm going to take it one step further for you, Joe, right? So the Checkpoint Charlie exists everywhere. They bring in digital banking, central banking, digital currencies. You've got a scenario now that you're checking in and out everywhere you go using vouchers that are programmed and you can only spend where you're told you can spend them. There's another word for that, man. That's called the Chinese social credit system. So what they are telling us, and when I say they, who's they? People in power. That's the head of our economy, the Chancellor of the Exchequer. Second most powerful person other than the Prime Minister and maybe the Foreign Secretary in the UK, right? He's telling us, I just played it there for you. He's telling us that's what he, as the UK, the head of the G7, want to bring in for the G7. 
And if I'm speaking to you the way I'm speaking now, and my employer or government, you heard that in the quote directly, yeah, deems me as saying or doing something inappropriate, suddenly I can't actually pay to come here and speak to you anymore. My, my digital currency won't even pay for the ticket because it will be known that I'm coming to speak to you. Sorry. Your, your vouchers don't allow you to purchase that ticket to go and speak to John. And this is where we get into the kind of censorship that we see in social media that is not... You can't have that kind of censorship with the First Amendment in, in, in normal discourse. Mm. But you can have that kind of censorship if you've developed a digital platform that distributes information, but it's a private company. Yeah. So think about what money is, where you can spend it on, spend it on whatever you want, versus this digital currency which is essentially controlled in a, a sense, yeah. like you have free speech on Twitter, but you really don't. Because yeah. if you go too far or you talk about something that they don't find appropriate, they'll just ban your account. That yeah. could be what we're looking at in terms of the, the, what we think of as free speech being social media platforms could be what we think of as your free range ability to buy whatever you want with whatever money that you've earned. So what's going on here, right? What, what's going on here is, y with this central banking digital currency, if you get to if you get to that situation where you end up with the Chinese social credit system in the West, why? Why would anyone want to do that, right? I believe we're in a moment of the Gutenberg press. Go back to when the printing press was invented. Technology disrupts power structures. It always has. Printing and its invention was a new technology. What happened when they invented the printing press the power structures who up until that point were reading the bible for you and were telling you that you got to pay this priest x amount of favors and he'll forgive you your sins and that became a bribery system right which is what martin luther was so upset about when he pinned his thesis to the to the wall the printing press disrupted that power dynamic because people could read the bible for themselves and they began realizing that the power structures were manipulating what was written to control people now, nobody in hindsight is going to argue that printing and its invention is a bad thing for humanity. But at the time, it led to war. It led to the 30 years war in Europe. Because it disrupted power so much that people began rising up and it led to this 30 year period of war, which eventually led to the Reformation and the rest is history, right? What's today's Gutenberg Press? The internet. The decentralization of information and then because of that, the decentralization of currency in the form of crypto is disrupting power because the way that after the revolution of the reformation the printing press control was still possible though obviously not to that level which is why we no longer have those absolute monarchies but control in a nation-state context was still possible to an extent because the money supply was controlled now what's happening is that the invention of the internet with the decentralization of information and in particular here the decentralization of currency in the form of cryptocurrencies is disrupting those power hierarchies and it's leading to this conflict now and we're in a moment when the printing press was invented the powers that be needed to try and hold on to that power as the 30 years war kicked off they eventually lost it but to hold on to it they became very brutal because they were losing their grip on power today to have the infrastructure in place that you can have a checkpoint Charlie society so that when the central banking digital currencies are in place, that infrastructure is already there because people were so scared they voluntarily allowed you to put that in place so that you can maintain your grip on power because what's coming around the corner is the decentralization of everything, of media, therefore of narrative. And of course, remember, whoever defines the truth gets to define reality. Decentralization of the economy through crypto, you no longer have the power to define the story and control the money supply. So the powers that be who are losing that power need to clamp down. They're clamping down on their own children because we are people who are born of the West. So it's an internal civil war in a hybrid war context over truth and over information. Centralization versus decentralization. It's no longer about left or right. It's about up versus down. It's about power versus those who don't have power. Do you think if there was no cryptocurrency, if there was no Bitcoin or any of the other crypto coins, that they would attempt to do some sort of digital currency? Do you think that this is a response yeah. to the understanding that that decentralized digital currency is eventually going to take over or has gained far more momentum than they ever anticipated? I think so. And also decentralized media because you can't control the narrative. Right. Now, we will get out of this because ultimately it's a numbers game. And ultimately, in times like this, you end up fighting against your own sons, right? It's 
those in power fighting their own people. And eventually the people up by sheer numbers, you know, end up becoming the people in power, right? So in the long run, we may well end up in a decentralized world, which will be much better. But as I say, that to get there, we have to get through this period of those in power attempting to, 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 to hold on to that power. Forging links. Forging links. Forging links. One person at a time.